All right, we've got a nodule on that, like acral skin, but it's, it's probably down in the deeper. Like you can see, it's like they've taken off the top of the skin and then popped out this nodule. And on acral skin, if you see a nodule like this, if you see a nodule of tumor taken off, not taken off by a surgeon from like the abdomen or something, but taken off by a derm, a nodule of tumor with nothing around it, it's almost always centered in the subcutis. Because if it's in the dermis, they're gonna take epidermis and it'll be attached. If it's in the muscle, they're not gonna go down underneath the fascia and pop a little thing out and not bring muscle with it. You'll see muscle attached. In the subcutis, sometimes fat's attached, sometimes the fat strips away, but that's a useful clue on test. Nodule of something that you can see, it looks like the whole thing's shelled out and there's nothing attached to it. Almost always that's a subcutaneous nodule. And if you see little ratty strands of pink dense collagen around it, that's almost always a subcutaneous nodule from the hand or the foot because the hand surgeons go in there and they just try to pluck that out without damaging anything else. And so things that are on the tendon sheet can push up into the subcutis on acral surfaces and they'll just go pluck it out, okay? So here we've got a nodule, we've got dense collagen in the background, real dense pink. And we've got osteoclastic giant cells, very good. And we have another area here that has the cell I wanna show. Let me see if I can find it. These cells, you kinda can appreciate, um, you can see it better on my screen, but I don't know why I can't see it up here. The actual cells of the tumor are these. They're histiocytoid cells, and they usually have abundant pink cytoplasm and an eccentric nucleus. Oh, wait, there. This guy. See that? It almost looks like a plasmacytoid or even rhabdoid cell where it's got a pink blob of cytoplasm pushing the nucleus out to the side. This is really characteristic of giant cell tumor tendon sheet. Don't go hunting for the giant cells right away. That's fine and real, it, it is a good way to learn them, but there are examples that don't have any giant cells or have very few. And if you don't learn to diagnose these with all of the other features, you'll be in real big trouble when you have a frozen section and there's no giant cells. And they tell you, well, the patient has a history of cancer and they've got a nodule that's hot on PET and you see mitoses and rhabdoid cells and you say, probably metastatic carcinoma. You go down the tubes because they're, they're often mitotically active and they're hot on PET. So they show up sometimes occasionally in weird sites, like I've seen one in the shoulder or other places in a patient with breast cancer that they were doing PET scans on because they're hot. They show up and then they biopsy it. So it's important to be careful about that, okay? So anyway, because they do look kind of epithelial and they do often have quite a few mitoses, totally benign still. The giant cells are great when you find them, but learn that the rhabdoid or plasmacytoid histiocytes, the very dense sclerotic collagen in the background, usually hemocytorin is present and sometimes it'll make like a little ring or a halo. I couldn't find it in this example, but a little ring or a halo around the outside of those histiocytoid cells. And you'll also get little areas that make like little pools that fall, the cells fall apart and the little histiocytes go, go for a little swim in these little cystic spaces. And if you're real lucky, you'll find foamy xanthomatous histiocytes around the periphery. And that's a really good clue when you find those. So spend some time the next time you see a giant cell tumor tendon sheet, and there's a foamy cell. And look around and learn all those other features because that were really, you see another one, look at that rhabdoid, eccentric plasmacytoid nucleus there. Really useful clues. These are common, and when they don't have giant cells, you can be in big trouble if you don't recognize all those other features. Most of the time, you do not get any skin with these. This, this surgeon was nice and included that top of the skin because they're rarely ever in the dermis, almost always below, subcutis or tendon sheath, okay? They're, I mean, they do always attach the tendon sheath, but that can present as a subcutaneous nodule. So giant cell tumor tendon sheath, the other name for this is tenosynovial giant cell tumor comma localized type. And there's a diffuse form of this, which is large and usually in the knee and sometimes villus, and that's called pigment of villanodular synovitis, which derms you don't need to worry about. Paths you definitely do. At a high power, it looks identical to giant cell tumor tendon sheet. They are just two ends of the same spectrum. But those are more problematic because they invade the knee and cause contractures and scarring. And, and even though they're not malignant, they're problematic. 